Hey and welcome to Never Went With Aragon. So here I want to cover some dev news. We've got some updates coming to like the Cleric, Enchanter's Hex, Stamina Regen, and also the Warden, that being the Paragon path for the Ranger. These days the primary path is Hunter as it just far outperforms the lowly Warden. But additionally we've got some Barbarian notes on how that rework's going and whether they're going to improve it further. So let's jump into everything. I'll put timestamps on the play bar below and first things first we go to the Cleric and in particular the Arbiter. It has the Channel Divinity. Now you'll also have this ability when you're not yet level 11 and have don't have the option to choose a paragon path yet. But once you choose devout, that tab ability becomes light of divinity, it's an entirely different thing. But on Arbiter, that tab, the channel divinity is still this kind of useless. And it's supposed to just restore divinity over time. And the amount that it does is, is meaningless. There's not much point standing around like that, except to generate action points when you can't be dealing damage. And I guess, yeah, some divinity. But they're looking at roughly doubling its impact. However, a little bit later, he confirms that they're probably going to increase it from 25 per second to 75 per second while in combat. This won't make it superior to consuming judgment pips, but it will at least make it not in such a terrible state. Moving on, we have the Mount Insignia bonus Enchanter's Hex. This is going to be getting a third iteration. You may have seen my news that it was going to get changed so that it would deal damage against only controllable enemies and not control immune enemies when you use a power that has control but they seem to have backed out of that and are now proposing to change it to this whenever you use an encounter or daily power with control effects on a target you deal 75 magnitude damage to the target that's it your simple requirement is to just be using a control power and it will gain that extra 75 magnitude hit this will get some extra fixes here so it'll only most cases trigger once per power use and then things like chill and grasping roots will no longer be able to trigger the effect they are class mechanics so all of those rangers out there no you won't be getting hex for your roots artifacts and non-player powers they shouldn't be able to trigger the effect and at wills shouldn't be either like ray of frost and the wizard and it will apply to any target hit with the control effect regardless of immunities so currently it's working in the form that if the enemy is immune to your control power you deal the damage which made sense but i guess they had some big balancing issues with that half of the more than half of the powers that are control don't work at all with regards to triggering hex on like the wizard that's the same with many other classes and then something like ray of frost does trigger it when it shouldn't so they will be updating it to this version and testing that out now the reason they're not going ahead with the version where they said they would have it only working against controllable enemies and not control immune enemies was because unfortunately they are running into a bunch of bugs and unexpected interactions and things like Barbarian's Trample of the Fallen. And so rather than go down that rabbit hole, they decided to back out and just go with this simple change that's going to end up with it simply dealing 75 mag to damage to the target when you use any control encounter or daily power. This is going to also mean it cannot stack with itself either i mean it didn't in the past but they're updating the tooltip to clearly show that and so ultimately the new version with it just yelling simply 75 magnitude damage with a control power will mean you can use this in multi-target content to still gain a decent amount of damage when you have things that have controls like stunning slowing pushbacking rooting etc as long as it's an encounter power or daily power doing that, it will work. Nothing else will. That means companion powers won't, mount powers won't, at wills won't. From here we jump to the rogue and we have the whisper knife with its razor action which is currently in a terrible state this will be getting changed because currently it works it will only hit one target and it will get updated so now that all targets can be hit when it triggers but you cannot trigger it more than once every five seconds and razor action can now critically strike 
Additionally, those of you who play Barbarian, Fighter DPS now, and Warlock, where you use your Sprint and Shadow Slip ability to use stamina to move around quickly and get some immunity frames. They recently reduced the stamina regeneration delay from 2 seconds down to 1 second, so when you use stamina, you have to wait 1 second before you start regaining any. This was at a horrible 2 seconds. Somebody asked if they could perhaps reduce that to 0 seconds. And, uh, well, they have not found a solution that would circumvent ways that you could just exploit that. So, they'll look if they can reduce the delay a bit more, but no promises on putting it to all the way on 0. Meaning, the instant you would stop using any stamina, you would start regenerating it. Would make sense, but I guess there's some spaghetti code there and issues they don't want to run into, so they're avoiding putting it at that. So, those of you who are rangers, you may be very happy to know that Warden is going to finally be getting looked at. It has been underperforming for quite some time now. The developer news is right here. They started their initial look at Warden. They're opening up a feedback thread. This is their note with that. Please use the thread to provide suggestions and possible changes along with feedback to any changes they make. And this would be somewhat similar to their approach that they did with the Rogue Whisper Knife. They're not likely to do any fundamental rework of the Paragon, just some increases to certain powers but nothing heavy. No like particular reworks to the powers or the mechanics just increasing numbers here and there and some bug fixes. They don't want to make like Warden so much superior than Hunter is. They want both of them to have their place. So it'll be a bit of an effort to try get that balanced, particularly when you look at Hunter having a higher skill ceiling. You don't want to cause people to not want to bother with Hunter making the effort not worth it when you could just switch to Warden. So a bit of balance needs to be done there. But ultimately, yeah, feedback is up for that. You can leave it on Discord there, probably on the forums as well, but I think Discord's usually the best place in Protector's Enclave Discord server. Ultimately, some of you should be happy that it's finally getting looked at after all this time. The way Warden was pretty much played, as far as I can remember, is in single target, you're abusing your Storm Strike, plus like Hindering Strike, Marauder's Rush, and then your Boar Charge. And this was combined with all these powers and features, but in particular, Blade Hurricane and Enhance Conductivity with Call of the Storm. Blade Hurricane was basically maintained all the time. Unfortunately, you can't, couldn't refresh it, so you would always stay in your melee stance, using these feats to gain the extra damage buffs with that, and the cooldown reduction. And ultimately, what you would do is you'd use an encounter power, and then go and use your at-wills until 3 seconds passed, and another encounter power, 3 seconds later, another encounter power, and then you're just using your at-wills in between. And that was really it. There wasn't a lot to it. And like multi-target damage, you'd probably switch over to your Steel Breeze then instead of your Boar Charge and mainly stick with your Marauders for gap closing. And you just use the other at will there. You're clear the ground. And it was pretty simple. You just had to try and maintain your bonus here. This cross swords or cross blades that blade hurricane and you'd end up dealing a ton of damage and it was really good as far as i remember it just got really power creeped over time with then artifacts coming into play where you need a lot more damage in bursts to compete with other classes and warden was very much just dps damage over time maintaining this bonus thus dealing quite a lot of damage on your at wills and you were just using your encounters to support that. So it was a pretty simple play style and it may very well remain like that. I think the easiest option is to just increase the effectiveness of that and it's basically gonna be like nice easy way to play, but otherwise they could also make a good ranged path as well. So you would have ranged powers you can use still using these same abilities, but 
actually on the range side because currently yeah you look at a lot of powers they're pretty useless in terms of actually dealing damage good in support and defensiveness it could have its place but not really you're a damage dealer you're focusing on dealing damage you could yes give up some of your damage to improve your teammates damage that is always useful but when it's just something like here, Borehide, increasing everybody's defense, giving somebody a bunch of movement speed and damage resistance, they're just not abilities you're going to use a whole lot because people don't need the, that defensiveness to survive. So what is the point in it? It doesn't fit in the meta right now. Anyway, we'll have to see what they do, but we're going to move on. There is some news for you Barbarian Blade Masters. They are not quite finished yet with updating it. They just wanted to give it a few tweaks on its multi-target damage there, some abilities, but we can see what they say here. They want to start gathering for a warden the information because solving issues on it are going to be trickier than Blade Master. Blade Master is more of a known issue in terms of its weakness. It's not very complex, while Rangers have a huge number of encounters and stat switching to make solutions a lot harder. But yes, there is more coming to Blade Master. They don't want to fundamentally rework Blade Master, just get its numbers more in line with other DPS power guns. Hence why they're working on magnitude updates and cooldown decreases and such. The stamina and sprint was one area where they wanted to tweak, hence the regen change, which should help with fighter changes too. The only mechanical changes they're looking at for Blade Master are fixing or replacing some of the non-viable feats class features, especially the capstone feats, as the choices there have always been problematic. So they're not done yet with Blade Master. They realize and understand it is not exactly that high up in terms of the ranking and dealing damage. And so they want to improve it a bit more. They're just, I guess, making a few initial adjustments first, looking at other classes, tweaking, finding what that balance is and where the good spot will be. But don't give up. They haven't turned their back on Blade Masters just yet. Ultimately, I'm looking forward what they're going to do with the, the Warden. It's got some pretty cool powers there. It's just, yeah, it's great and all with the Atwills, but a lot of the powers here are just very underwhelming in terms of how effective they are. They definitely need some improvements, some TLC, and we'll see what happens. I'll keep you guys posted. It's just in the feedback phase right now gathering people's opinions and bug reports. If you have lots of experience on Warden, feel free to leave your feedback as well. Another massive thank you to all of these channel members for their added support, and we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.